God bless you. I'm here with a warning because the Lord is gracious. God is full of mercy. He is full of compassion. And while this warning is to a specific individual, in case you're wondering why it is the Lord has prompted me to share this publicly is for the rest of us to pray and for the rest of us even to repent for our criticism, our judgment, and our lack of prayer for certain people, specifically in this case, Sean Combs. And uh, I'm just going to go into this word after I pray and I'm going to get out of here. Father, in the name of Jesus, I thank you for the oracle of God, the opportunity to speak what you are saying into the earth for the good of your people and for the building of your kingdom. Glory to your name. May the words of my mouth and the meditations of my heart be acceptable in your sight, O Lord, my strength, my redeemer, my dwelling place. May I do all of this for you in the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. I'm going to go right into this because the Lord so desperately wants to save Sean Combs' life. The Lord so desperately wants to save Sean Combs' uh, integrity. The Lord wants to remove all that does not belong in your life, Sean Combs. And the Lord has... Uh, assign me to call you by your uh, given name and not other names. And so I just want to say this uh, for everyone who's watching or listening. Uh, the Lord gave me a dream specifically about Sean Combs and his current state of mind. And my brother, in case you see this, I pray that you receive the word of the Lord because God is so desperately seeking your salvation, your strength, your renewal. And the Lord wants to rescue you, but it's going to take humility. In this dream, I saw Sean Combs defending himself aggressively. And many of us are aware. And in case you are not, there have been uh, a bevy of accusations lobbied, uh, lobbed against him that have to do with uh, accusations of inappropriate behavior and abuse and the like. For the purpose of this dream and this prophetic word, I won't go into it, but in the dream, I saw you, Sean Combs, had changed your name and you changed your name to Victorious G. We know that G can mean gangster. Victorious gangster. There's this pride. There's this hip hop culture that is so infused in your being that you are blind to what the Lord is seeking to do in your life, which is to bring you to a place where you will recognize that all that you have, all that you have accomplished has been by the mercies of God, even when you have failed to worship him in spirit and truth. What I knew in this dream is that when you changed your name to Victorious G, that it was a play on words. We remember your most famous and influential protege, Notorious B.I.G., and it was a move in the dream for you to closely relate yourself to him as if to benefit from his legacy and for people to be reminded of who you are with regard to his career and his ascension and his meteoric rise in the hip hop community. So that it's almost like a reputation washing that you seek to, um, to do here. And the Lord is warning you that that is not enough, that the washing that you need is going to be through the blood of Jesus. And there is no way that you can emphasize the notorious B.I.G. strong enough that will remove the sin and remove your need for Jesus Christ. Now, I'm not here to say that Sean Combs is guilty of anything. I'm just telling you what I know the Lord is saying to him right now, that emphasizing your prominent role in hip hop is not going to work. Uh, that your idea to emphasize your more positive history with the Notorious B.I.G. is not going to work. That this attempt to show that you are innocent and victorious is not going to work. It's not enough to win in the court of public opinion, says the Lord. 
hear the Lord. He's saying to win in the court of public opinion is not the point of this challenge and this temptation that you're in. This trial that you're in is meant to call you back to Jesus Christ. The Bible says that the Lord brings us to destruction and then tells us to return. Glory to the Lord that his mercy endures forever, that his desire for your soul outweighs his desire for you to look good in front of people. Hallelujah. That your strategy to look good in public is not the point. To use the notorious B.I.G.'s reputation to wash your own by association might seem like a good, strong legal counsel, a, a great idea. But the Lord says, are you looking at this spiritually? Are you concerned as much as he is for your soul condition? The Lord says, this is your strategy. He's shown me this strategy that has been baked and cooked up in your private meetings. And the Lord is saying, I, I understand what you're trying to do, but it's not going to work. And then the Lord gave me a second dream. And in this dream, I was in your shoes, Sean Combs. The Lord put me in your shoes and I was dancing as you've been known to dance because your history is that you were a dancer. You were a hip hop dancer. Many people forget this. And, you, and I was dancing as you've been known to dance in your very patented way. And it was because the Lord was saying, you believe that you can stay in this state of mind that you're in and be proud of your accomplishments and your wealth and believe that you've done all of this on your own and in your own strength. And so that you're going to just dance your way through this, that it's going to be just like like always, you kind of press through your trouble. But the Lord is saying, no, 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 it's not going to be like that. The Lord is saying, you might think you're going to walk through this with joy and confidence with your head held high and that you will not be held accountable. But it is the Lord who's holding you accountable. And again, I'm making clear that I am not speaking specifically to any of the accusations lobbed against Sean Combs. I don't know. The Lord has not given me any kind of access as to whether or not he's guilty of anything. But I do know the Lord wants him to be held accountable for his life, his lifestyle, which has not been giving the Lord glory. It has been putting him in a position to be used by the evil one. And the Bible tells us that we will be held accountable, that all things that are hidden will be made known. Secret things will be revealed. That's the word of the Lord. And the Lord is telling me to tell you, Sean, that you might think you won't be held accountable and that the accusations against you are not going to create any trouble beyond costing you some money. The Lord is saying you need to be careful. You might think nothing has changed. The Bible, uh, the word of God is to you that you might feel that you're free as a bird, but the Lord has prompted me to warn you this is a warning in scripture. Ezekiel was told by the Lord that is a good thing to warn, to be bold in warning the righteous and the unrighteous, and that it gives you an opportunity to turn away from wickedness and return to the Lord. The Lord has prompted me to warn you. He says you should be very careful not to underestimate the consequences of your actions whether they have to do with the accusations or not. The Lord is telling you not to underestimate the consequences of your actions. As I was praying for you, Sean, the Lord showed me an ax cutting down a tree. I saw this so vivid in, my, in the vision of God. And the Spirit of God is cutting you down to size. I'm saying this with a smile on my face because this is actually the mercy of God. He's trying to turn you away from destruction. The Bible says that the Lord Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life. And he says, if you build your life on anything except a solid rock, that the wind and the waves will come against that house and it will be destroyed. There is a way that seems right to man, but it leads to destruction. The Lord seeks to save you from destruction and he's chopping you. He's cutting you down to size and he says, submit to God and let him lift you up. This is such an, a clarion call to you to wake up to your destitution. God says, I will not be mocked. The scripture says, God is not mocked that whatever a man sows, that he will also reap. The Lord says to you, this is my doing. I am exposing you and it is for your good. This is for your freedom and your deliverance. 
submit to the Lord. Matthew 3 and 10 says, and even now the ax is laid to the root of the trees. Therefore, every tree which does not bear good fruit is cut down and thrown into the fire. The fire is not to destroy you. The fire is to burn away everything that doesn't belong. The fire is to create in you a clean heart and to renew a right spirit within you. The fire is to make you a perfect sacrifice before the Lord. The Bible says that every sacrifice will be salted with fire. The Lord is cutting you down to, to size and he is removing you and casting you into the fire, hoping that the fire will awaken you, that the fiery trial will be one that will cause you to endure patiently and grow in Christ. The Bible says that we should take joy when we endure fiery trials, knowing that the trying of our faith produces patience and that it will have its perfect work. There's a perfecting work God is doing in your life, Sean Combs. He's putting you in the fire for your deliverance and freedom. He wants you to submit to the discomfort of breakthrough. Glory to the Lord. The ax is laid to the root of the trees to the source where you have not been sourced in God. He's removing that source where you have been plugged into all the wrong things. God's saying those things no longer will bring death in, in what you think is life into your life. No, I want you to abide in me, says the Lord. Come to God, Sean, and turn away from your wicked ways. And the Lord says, I will restore you. But if you think victory will come from another place, the Lord says, you will experience great destruction. If you think victory will come from another place, the Lord says there will be great destruction. He says, your palace will be struck down. Take care with your life, Sean. Take care with your life. Take care with your life and your words. The Lord is speaking to you right now. This is the word of the Lord to you. For those of you who are not named Sean Combs, I pray you will lift this man up in prayer and you will uh, not take on the mouth of perversity, according to the scriptures, that will put away from us the mouth that speaks perverse words, and that we will have compassion on this man and pray for his breakthrough. I believe the Lord wants to do great work in his life. Glory to God. Glory to God. I'm going to pray for you, Sean. And I'm going to ask the intercessors to be praying for you as well. And God, I thank you for, for laying the ax to the root. Oh, God, we pray now that you have your perfect will done in his life. That Sean Combs will recognize you're cutting him down to size for his good. It is good that I was afflicted, says the word of God, that I might learn your statutes. Oh, many, of the, many are the afflictions of the righteous, but the Lord delivers him out of them all. This poor man cried and the Lord heard him and delivered him from all of his troubles. There's a crying out that the Lord is seeking for Sean Combs, God. And I pray that he will cry out to you. Hallelujah. God, show yourself faithful and glorious in his life. In Jesus' name, amen. And the people of God said amen. I praise the Lord for his mercy and his truth. It is by the Lord's mercies that we are not consumed. Hallelujah. They are new every morning. Great is your faithfulness to us, O oh God. Pray for this man. And I pray that he does see this word because it is the Lord God speaking. And even if he doesn't see it, it's been released into the atmosphere. And by faith, we're gonna pick it up and pray that he hears the voice of the Lord. This is the Lord's doing, and it is marvelous in our eyes. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. May he lift his countenance upon you and give you peace. Bless you, and we'll see you again. Bye-bye. <laughs>